Hey everybody, this is Brian from Carving is Fun. In this video, I'm going to be continuing my little chess making series here by making a rook or a castle, however you guys want to call it. This one's probably going to be the next easiest one when compared to the pawns, and you're only going to need four of them. So what you're going to need to do to make it is get yourself your preferred whittling knives, a one inch by one inch by two inch block of wood, or a one inch uh, diameter dowel that's cut to two inches long, and then a pencil to make marks. Uh, like I said, it's pretty simple to do, and it should probably only take you maybe 20 to 30 minutes to make one. All right, so let's get started here. So first things first, we're gonna want to turn this into more of a round peg. If you're already using a dowel, uh, you can go ahead and just skip this step right here. But all we're going to do is just mainly round off the edges. Now we don't need to make it perfect, just round it off a little bit and then we're going to finish it up when we get to the detail steps. Now that you got your round peg here, we're going to start adding in some details. Now this is going to be pretty simple to do. Let's see which side do I want. I think that should do it. At the bottom, we're just going to basically have our feet right there. Nothing special. And maybe about halfway up, we're going to have the top part of the, um, the middle section here. And then just below that, we're going to add another line for a marker because I don't like to make a sharp point right here. I usually like to leave it a little bit either rounded or curved. That way it doesn't chip while we're uh, either using them or s storing them. On the head, just make a little bit of a marker right there. So all we're going to do here is just roll the piece of wood and continue the line all the way around. All right. Then now that you got your, your lines all made, we're gonna start cutting from the bottom and working our way up. Now when doing this, it's best to put the stop cut in first and put it in here at the bottom. Just go ahead and push in your knife all the way around. Make a nice little stop cut going all the way around the block of wood. And then we're going to start cutting at a slight angle going in. Now be careful when doing this part because you can blow out the bottom. So just take it slow, take it easy. You don't need to push all the way in. Just make sure you get up to that stop cut and just start removing the wood there. Now if the wood's not coming off, just go ahead and uh, keep going around and then you'll add another stop cut in there. And that'll remove the rest of the wood. And you're basically going to be alternating back and forth between slicing down towards the bottom and making stop cuts. And then we'll start working from that line down. Just work your way up to where you made that second line, your second reference line to start working down from and just cut towards the base. You don't want to also make the point too terribly thin because you can make it really thin and then just like really spindly. Um, I'm probably gonna have to redo those two that I already made because I made them really, really thin points there. And it's a little bit of a weak point. And you just keep thinning it, thinning it out a little bit, smoothing everything out get into where you want it to be. It'll take a little bit of time to do so. It might be a little tedious, but, and then they'll look good. There you go. That looks about right. And then now that we got that done there, we're gonna start working from the second line to this line right here. So this line is gonna represent the bottom of the, the head of the castle there. So what we're going to do is create a stop cut at the, the base of the, the head going all the way around. So it's basically the mirror of what we're doing here. So 
All right, I'm doing the same thing and just go all the way around and remove some of that wood. Since it's basically the same thing, I'm gonna fast forward this part real quick for you. Because basically it's the same exact thing what we did down here. All right, and then now for some of you that think that the top part is a little bit too big, you guys can go ahead and whittle yours down a little, little bit like I did with mine. I kind of liked it a little bit more of a narrow tip, but that's just me personally. Uh, you don't have to do this, just but if you do, just go go around and just around the outside and just remove some of the outside wood. All right, now that I got that done. I'm just gonna go and like taper off the the edges here, just make it look a little bit better. All right, and then the final touch, if you really want to, you can make the top face a little bit more concave. This works better with a hook knife or a scoop knife if you have it, but you can stick your blade in there kind of work your way around and make a little cone I just found that the hook knife just works a heck of a lot better if I wanted to make a nice little concave look to it completely your call if you want to do this but I'm going to do it real quick it's easy enough to do there you go that's good enough and if at that point, you're basically done. Like I said, it's a pretty easy little uh, carving there. Um, now, one of the things I did notice that with my stain is that uh, if you're doing this, if you're applying it on a flat surface, it kind of has a lighter tint to it um, on the parts that are straight up and down. All the curved parts where the, the stain can actually get down to the green it looks a lot better. So what I am actually going to do is take a little bit, uh, take this to a little bit of a 120 grit sandpaper and just smooth it out a little bit. There we go. Now that it's sanded on the sides, hopefully it will allow the stain to penetrate the wood a little bit better and create a nice more even look to it there. Uh, you could sand the whole thing if you want. I just mainly did it on the sides. I Primarily just want to see how that turns out with most of it being uh, finished by knife by a knife and then the sides just being finished with sandpaper. So let's see how that turns out here. Alright, so first things first, we're going to apply some beeswax to these guys and then we're going to apply some stain to these guys over here. So, applying beeswax is pretty dang easy. Uh, this is beeswax paste, the uh, Interstate Woodworks beeswax paste. It's pretty easy to do, it's just like applying lotion. Just take it in your finger and just smear it all the way around. Then when you're done applying it, just go ahead and buff off the excess with a rag there. And now we're going to go ahead and move off to our rooks that we're going to use with the wood finish. I'm using some Minwax. Uh, stain. This is dark walnut. So just go ahead and give it a shake and then open it up. Now it's best to wear gloves with these just to make sure you don't get it, your hands stained a different color. And the rag, and dip it in there and just start applying it. Let's see. I'm really curious to see how it turns out for both because I have one that's sanded on the sides, one that isn't. So I want to see what the difference is going to be. And there we go, I have it applied. It's not too terribly much of a difference between, I guess there is, like this, the one that's just knife finished on the side and not sanded is a little bit more inconsistent. So I guess it'd be up to you, uh, your call if you want to do it or not, if you want to do the extra work. Um, but yeah, it turned out pretty good. Just let it dry for about two to four hours and then you can start using it from there. Alright, so the next video is going to be the, the bishops over there. And then after that, I think we're going to have the king and queen to do it. And I'm going to do those at the same exact time. Because the way that I want to do it is uh, basically it looks about the same for the body, but the rest, but the head is just slightly different for the different crowns. 
Alright, thanks for watching everybody. I uh, hope you have yourselves a great day.